A Call of Duty developer opens up a discussion about skill-based matchmaking. NVIDIA's RTX 4090 is catching fire, The Witcher is getting an Unreal Engine 5 remake, and much more on Today in Gaming. Hey guys, Levelcap here. New Fuel got thrown into the skill-based matchmaking debate. Popular streamer Tim the Tatman says he won't be streaming Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer because of the contentious system. News sources like Charlie Intel have confirmed skill-based matchmaking was active during the game's beta and that it seems particularly aggressive. If you're unfamiliar, skill-based matchmaking is a system that server matches players based on their region, ping to server, and their overall skill level. In recent years, players and critics of the system believe it's been deployed more as a retention tool than something that genuinely improves the gameplay experience. Patents and research papers from EA and Activision have shown that developers are experimenting with matchmaking you against different players so you're more likely to win or lose. For example, if they want you to lose, they'll match you against high skill players so you're less likely to win. They're also experimenting with stuff like changing stats in real time. The general idea is that you're less likely to quit if you win and lose in specific patterns. Skill-based matchmaking is at the very core of these systems. However, until recently, most developers have kept quiet about the the actual implementation of skill-based matchmaking. Yesterday, former executive producer on Call of Duty, Mark Rubin, weighed in on the issue. He says that he's not a fan of skill-based matchmaking, that he doesn't like how it treats players, and that it felt like executives at Infinity Ward or Activision pushed it onto the developers. Rubin feels skill-based matchmaking only belongs in ranked modes. He also clarified in a reply that the variety of being in matches with better and worse players than you makes the games more fun, provided that they have a good team balancing system in place. Ruben is currently at Ubisoft working on their upcoming competitive FPS, X Defiant. The reaction to his statement seems generally pretty positive, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Is skill-based matchmaking good, or should it be limited to ranked modes? Now, if you actually want to watch a video dedicated to the subject matter, about two years ago, I went sort of deep dive with it, listing the pros and cons for skill-based matchmaking system, who it helps, who it hurts, and that sort of thing. Definitely worth a watch if you're interested in going deeper with that discussion. In a quick bit of Battlefield 2042 news, players spotted a new railgun tank in a video posted to the game's Twitter account. The post was removed shortly after going live, presumably because it shows unannounced content. The tank is shown driving through the frame and firing a shot off. Vehicle variety in 2042 is pretty weak, so it's nice to see DICE are working on expanding the available options. DICE released a fix for broken battle pass and liquidator reward tracking. You should now be getting any missing progress awarded the next time that you launch the game. Unfortunately, they're still working on a fix for the crashes and instability introduced with the 2.2 update. Nvidia's brand new RTX 4090 might catch fire thanks to a design flaw with the 12-pin power connector. Reports of the connector failing, shorting pins, and catching fire hit social media after a Redditor shared images of their melted connector. It seems like the issue is the connector bending, which stresses the pins, potentially bending them and causing damage. As for why the connector is bending, the RTX 4090 is a really wide GPU and many cases will squeeze this connector when you put the side panels back on. Nvidia have launched an internal investigation to sort the issue out. In the meantime, if you have one of these cards, or really any card, you want to make sure that your PC case is not crushing that power connector. The original Witcher game is getting an Unreal Engine 5 remake. CD Projekt Red announced the remake this morning. It'll be co-developed with Polish studio Fool's Theory. They've served as a support studio on big-name titles like Divinity 2, Baldur's Gate 3, and Outriders. The project is in early development, so don't expect a trailer or release date anytime soon. Mega-hit action RPG Genshin Impact could have been an Xbox exclusive. An anonymous source at Microsoft told Reuters that the company was in talks with Genshin's developers about exclusivity, but decided to pass on the deal. The game became a massive multi-platform hit with its mobile version raking in billions. That success and Xbox missing out on exclusivity was apparently a key factor in Microsoft looking to recruit more Chinese developers. 
professional audio company Rode has launched a new division focused exclusively on gaming products. Rode X is launching with two microphones and a new desktop app called Unify. The microphones offer advanced filtering and effects in addition to high quality audio. Unify serves as a host for the effects controls and a digital mixer. It supports submixes and other audio routing features essential for streaming and Zoom presentations. The big draw is that Unify is the first software of its kind to also be made available as a standalone product. Competitors like Elgato's Wavelink app require a compatible hardware product to run. Unify is free with any Rode X product or standalone for a monthly fee. While the advanced audio effects aren't available unless you use one of their mics, all of the software's other features will work with whatever mic or audio interface that you have. More Naughty Dog remakes are in the works. Sony announced a new partnership with the studio and PlayStation Visual Arts, the team that assisted on The Last of Us Part 1. It's uncertain what game these studios are working on or if it's actually another remake, but it looks pretty likely that we'll be getting more remakes out of this partnership. Multiplayer servers for Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition are officially dead. From Software announced the unfortunate news over the weekend, the game launched in 2012 as a port of the game's 2011 console release. Since then, the franchise has become a monumental success. The Prepare to Die Edition was replaced by a remaster in 2018, but fans of the original game felt that it compromised the multiplayer experience. So the original port still had a strong following among diehard players. Players. The developers have been working since January to restore server support for all three Dark Souls games. An exploit was discovered that let players do all sorts of nefarious things to each other's PCs. Fixing that exploit has been a big challenge and it took until August for Dark Souls 3 to come back online. Dark Souls 2 was restored more recently and Dark Souls Remastered is getting fixed in the near future. Before I get to the next story, take a second to hit that subscribe button or become a channel member. Any support is greatly appreciated. Appreciated. Channel members get exclusive chat emotes and a name badge, plus you really help support this channel financially. If you've been waiting for a Battlefield-inspired FPS that looks like Minecraft with advanced real-time destruction, well, I've got some good news for you. An open beta for Sector's Edge is live on Steam. It's free to play and looks like somebody turned teardown into an FPS multiplayer shooter. Entire levels can be destroyed in 8v8 battles with an arsenal of 14 unique guns and nearly 200 attachments. It also has 15 maps and multiplayer modes. Sector's Edge will be an early access title for at least another the year, but reviews seem very positive so far. Now, if you're looking to watch a video with some more FPS content, I highly recommend the latest GTFO video that I posted where I'm running through some rundowns with Karma Cut. This game is honestly fantastic. It's got very positive reviews on Steam. It's one of the most challenging FPS co-op games I've ever played, which is great if you're looking for something that really ups the ante of your co-op experience. Check it out. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.